Soul series is widely regarded as gaming masterpieces. Even the less good ones provide enjoyment and great moments. Today we're taking a look at some of the lowest points in these games, namely the top 10 worst Soulspawn bosses. And because we're ranking the Souls games, a requirement is that the games must have Souls in the title. Hold on. As I said, the games must have Souls in the title. With that sorted, let's take a look at the worst boss fights these games have to offer. And if you liked the video, be sure to subscribe and like for more. Number 10. Cursed Rotted Greatwood Dark Souls 3 The Cursed Rotted Greatwood is one of Dark Souls 3 early bosses, and also one of the more tedious fights. Making your way into the boss arena seems innocuous at first, with a few villagers moping around. It definitely picks up when the big ass tree in the corner starts moving. The key to fighting this boss is targeting the individual egg clusters all over the boss's body, while avoiding the sweeps and lunges of the villagers. After blowing up three clusters, the great wood destroys the ground beneath you and you all fall into the pit of hollows, the center of the moon maker covenant. Here the tree sprouts arms from the stomach and becomes much more deadly, and the scenery to its credit, changes to a sinister tone. The most annoying part about this boss is that in order to use boss souls, you need to beat this boss, although it is optional. It's not a very fun fight, and in the end it's easily forgettable. The only saving grace is the lore, that it once used to be a holy spirit tree, but it got changed by the inhabitants of the settlement's curses. Number 9. Dirty Colossus. Demon Souls. The Dirty Colossus from Demon Souls, an amalgamation of the compounded filth found within the Valley of Defilement, is found at the end of the 5-2 area, the Swamp of Sorrow. This behemoth of a creature stands tall like a troll and hits like one as well. The drawbacks the Colossus has is that it is incredibly slow and also quite harmless. The biggest threat is the swarms of flies which can spread to you if you come into contact with its attacks, but can also be fixed by going over the many torches and burning yourself. Or if you prefer my style, putting on turpentine and whacking it dead before it can do much, if anything, about it. Overall, the boss feels lackluster both in terms of design, but also gameplay aspects. That you also fight against this monstrosity at the end of one of the longest and most tedious areas in the game doesn't really help its plea. Number 8. The Witches of Hemwick. Bloodborne. I am not taking the Chalice dungeons into consideration when ranking the Bloodborne entry. The Witches of Hemwick is arguably the only bad boss in the entirety of Bloodborne. I've heard others mention Mikolash, and I myself don't really like Lawrence, but they can still be enjoyable, and both are unique, which I appreciate, while their witches are far from enjoyable. The atmosphere and boss room stands on the same level of quality as other boss fights, but where it lacks is the way the fight plays out. Starting out, they summon these long, slender figures called Mad Ones. Unfortunately, you can completely ignore these enemies and search for the witch duo instead. A lot of damage can be dealt quickly as the witches themselves are pretty much defenseless. If you die or go back to the hunter's dream and spend all your insight, you can trivialize it further as the mad ones won't spawn and it's a free whack-a-mole with the witches. Small changes can improve this fight immensely, but as it stands, it's a bad fight through and through. Number 7. Belfry Gargoyles Dark Souls 2 What do you get if you combine a great boss fight with Dark Souls 2? You get the Belfry Gargoyles from said game. This boss fight almost exactly mirrors the fight from the first game, but instead of the sudden reveal and infliction of panic, here it is just tedious. Every gargoyle is made of some sort of metal, and they all function the same way, with a lot of different moves. Add in a small rooftop as the arena, and we've got a fight that's hard to forget, but for all the wrong reasons. As if that wasn't enough to sell this as a bad fight, the gargoyles are not a duo, 
or even a trio. They can gang up on you as many as 5 at a time if you take too long to kill them. Overall, the Belafry Gargoyles is an uninspired mess and one you'll unfortunately remember, although you don't even want to. Number 6. Pinwheel. Dark Souls. Ah, the infamous, agreed upon, easiest boss in Dark Souls, maybe even the series. At the end of the catacombs you'll find this sad amalgamation of a mother, child and a father, woven into one being through necromancy gone wrong. The fight itself is almost always easy, but you can also always die if you're not careful. He can split himself into carbon copies which disappear when hit, but can still do a lot of damage with their fireball attacks. The real pinwheel is also able to use a continuous flamethrower attack. The low HP and the overall easy fight can't be understated, and although the lore of how pinwheel stole the right of kindling from Nito, and the horrible fate that him and his family suffered is simultaneously sad and well written, it doesn't really save the fight itself from being bad. Add in an additional move of some kind and more HP and it could have avoided this list. Number 5. Dragon God, Demon Souls. The last boss found in the Ark Stone of the Burrow King, the Dragon God, is the worst boss in Demon Souls, bar none. Demon Souls prides itself on having a unique experience when it comes to arch demons, and Dragon God is no different. The whole fight revolves around a game of hide and seek, where being seen results in a very probable death. The trick is to hide behind pillars and avoid the dragon's gaze while traveling down a path to a massive ballista, breaking fallen pillars in your path. The dragon sometimes roars and its eyes begin to glow if it's spotted you, so you better hide fast. The worst part is the very subtle differences before an attack happens, not knowing if you're in his field of vision or not, and if you do happen to die, you'll unfortunately have to redo the entire fight from the beginning. Even after firing off the two ballistas, you still need to go up in its face and whack on it a bit, but you can still die from the breath, so be careful. Small adjustments may make this a better fight, especially for someone who's semi-colorblind like myself, but I doubt it will help clean the stain of the experience with this lackluster boss fight. Number 4. Covetous Demon, Dark Souls 2 Much like the creature's appearance, this boss is akin to a flopping dead turd that has sat too long in some shoe polish and thus have begun to shine. A shiny shit. <laughs> the arena where the covetous demon is contained is round and flat, with no discernible interesting mechanics or otherwise. The small amount of attacks this demon can try to inflict damage with is easily dodged and does mostly little damage. The most deadly attack is when it manages to grab you, followed by eating you, also resulting in all your equipment being removed. Although this would have been a fantastic mechanic for a boss, maybe paired with a smaller arena or an arena with traps or deadly falls, it could have created a natural panic of whether to equip just a weapon or your armor first while also focusing on dodging, but no, we're stuck with this uninspired blob that can't even begin to compare to Jabba the Hutt. It's more or less an obstacle than a fully fledged boss, and you'll likely forget the fight after it happened, or shrug your shoulders and proceed forward. Disappointing is the word. Number 3. Royal Rat Authority, Dark Souls 2 Originally very close to the similarly boring mob boss, Royal Rat Vanguard, but Authority is the clear winner when it comes to sucking ass. The arena itself is suitable, because after the fight have officially begun, you will be running for your literal life from this toxic turge with tails. 
one or two bites and you're essentially dead already. And as if this wasn't enough, a big rat comes and begins to lunge at you with the speed of a rabid chihuahua. If you don't have a bow or some form of magic, this will be an uphill battle from the very start. Apart from the mobs and frankly bland design of the rat authority, the boss also borrows many of its moves from the great grey wolf Sith in the first game. To be entirely honest, the entire fight could have been removed and the game would probably be better as a result. As frustrating as this fight can be, it has one saving grace that makes it slightly better. Once you manage to beat the fight, you never have to do it again. Number 2. Prowling Mages and Gang Dark Souls 2 I know it's congregation, but I prefer gang instead. What could make a supposed boss fight instantly bad? Putting mobs in a small room and calling it a day. Exactly what was done with the second worst fight in the series. The Prowling Magus and Congregation. Not only is this a masterclass in what not to do when designing a boss, it also heavily clashes with the game's design and combat mechanics. Oftentimes you'll want to use the lock-on mechanic, but doing so in this fight would be a grave mistake. Having to dodge magic and projectiles while locked onto a crawler isn't optimal, and focusing on the casters first can result in being overwhelmed by enemies. Not only is it a badly designed fight, it's not even that hard and most players will easily kill the boss on their first try, leaving the memory of a boss fight for all the wrong reasons. This boss fight can easily be used as a bad example when arguing why many people dislike the second game and many flaws spread to the rest of the game as well. Before we take a look at the worst of the worst boss fights in the Soul series, let's take a peek at other stinkers that missed out on being included. Number 1. Bed of Chaos. Dark Souls. What else deserves the title of the absolute worst boss in the entire Souls series than the almost universally agreed upon Bed of Chaos from Dark Souls? This boss remains a mystery in why the outcome became so bad. The lore and design itself is good if not more, and it feels like an imposing foe. But it's all hiding the chaos underneath, yeah, the, pun intended. The issues are many and easily noticeable. The perhaps biggest is the arduous length you have to run to even get to the boss. And since you're very likely to die during the fight, you're also likely to experience the frustrating trek at least once. I find myself being confused why they didn't just put a bonfire nearby in the remake, but that's a discussion for another day. Bed of Chaos from the first game is the epitome of a bad fight, and it so clearly doesn't belong in Dark Souls at all. When even the creator of the game himself comes out and brands it a failure, a mistake, you know it's not a good fight. A stain on an otherwise fantastic game. Bed of Chaos is and will forever be the worst boss fight in all of Souls. Thank you for viewing the video and thank you for making it this far. If you liked what you saw please subscribe for more of these types of videos and don't hesitate to write down in the comments if you thought I was wrong. What is your least favorite boss fight? Maybe I forgot some, who knows? 
Again, thank you and hopefully I'll see you in my next videos as well. Have a good day or evening. Bye bye.